after Jesus died on the cross on Friday, on the sixth day of the week, the preparation day, the day prior to the Sabbath, he was taken to a tomb. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus both went to see Pilate and being men of means and influence, they were able to ensure that the body of Jesus was given an honorable burial rather than one that the lowest of criminals would receive. Luke 23 verse 50 to 56 points out that this day was the preparation day, the day prior to the Sabbath and it was drawing near. As they didn't have time to prepare the body of Jesus fully, they went home with the intention to come back on the first day of the week. Even in death, Jesus rested on the Sabbath showing the importance of the Sabbath to both Jesus and his followers. He was taken to what is known today as the Garden Tomb. This tomb here behind me, which was discovered in the late 1800s, is believed by many believers and scholars alike to be the place where Jesus rested. Soldiers were placed outside, and for a while it looked like they had finally gotten rid of Jesus. However, as the text says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Jesus was going to rest a while, but not forever. His supporters though were grief stricken as their hopes for an earthly reign of Jesus were dashed. A large portion of the New Testament is focused on proving this key attribute of Jesus' divinity, that he rose from the dead. As the song says, we serve a risen savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men may say. When Jesus rose from the grave, it was marked like his death by an earthquake. The soldiers who were standing guard witnessed this momentous event. They saw the stone rolled, they saw the angels come down, and they saw Jesus come from the grave. Convicted in their hearts and with a story on their lips, they went to tell the priests, but they bribed them and convinced them to say that the disciples came and stole his body while they slept. There is no way that this truth could be suppressed though. On Sunday morning, Mary was the first to come down here and seeing the stone rolled away, she goes and tells the disciples that Jesus is not in the tomb. Peter and John then run to the tomb with her and seeing that her account is accurate, they then leave. Mary though stays and she lingers a while, stricken with grief. She then sees two angels who ask her why she is crying and she says that they have taken Jesus' body and she cannot find it. It is then that Jesus appears to her and says, Mary. She responds and says, Rabbi or teacher, and he tells her to go and tell the others and Peter that he is risen. He specifically mentions Peter for he knew how bad Peter felt since his denial and he wants to let him know that he is forgiven. Filled with joy, Mary rushes to the disciples, this time bringing news of the resurrection. It was almost news that was too good to be true. Their hopes and dreams have been crushed at Calvary, and now just a few days later, he is risen. The idea or concept of a resurrection is incredibly difficult to get one's mind around, but it was news that they wanted to believe. After all the miracles that Jesus had done, this was surely possible. Jesus is different to other gods, but it is on this point where the greatest distinction lies. Other gods that other faith groups venerate are either inanimate objects or they are dead. Jesus is different for the grave had no hold over him. Death had no sting and the grave had no victory. Our faith today has life because Jesus is risen. 
as he said to Peter before he denied him, I'm going to prepare a place for you and if I go, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Today we serve a risen Savior. He lives to make intercession for us and he will one day come again and take us back to heaven. May we surrender our hearts to him. May we accept his gift of salvation and live with him for eternity.